So we have some late breaking news from Starlink. Guess what? Uh, they are gonna have mobility for RVs now. What does that matter for people on boats? Well, we've already had a video on how we've used the standard RV uh, edition on our boat. It's worked out really well during the summer. Mm -hmm. yeah, went up to Desolation Sound. It's great. Yeah. Uh, every now and then we get into an anchorage that was a little tight and it would drop out, but it looks like Starlink has solved that. Yeah, so let's talk more about that. All right, so we know that there's the Marine Edition out there. It's ridiculously expensive. It's $10,000 for the equipment, and it is $5,000 a month. It's really meant for commercial. So if you think about ships or cruise lines or any of those types of things, it's really who it's targeted at. It's not targeted at recreational boaters. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some uh, updates that have gone on now that they have in motion for RVs and they are launching a flat panel. This flat panel is a high performance flat panel. It's the mm -hmm. same one that they launched earlier for the business high performance uh, offering. Uh, and then later they launched the Marine offering, which has two of those high performance dishes because when you're on the ocean for tracking and being able to have the performance that you need from that, that's why they came up with that solution. Again, yeah. ridiculously expensive, leaving all of us kind of high and dry in the what, recreational boating side of the house. Right. But as of today, exciting stuff, this new flat panel is basically one of those marine high performance flat antennas. How is it different? Well, it's actually pretty different. It is 22 inches by 20 inches. Now to compare that to the regular RV version or the one that is the residential one, those are 11 inches-ish by 20 inches. So this one is it's almost twice the width. Why does that matter? Well, two reasons it matters. One, it can track more satellites and it also is able to do that through two two ways that they're telling us is one, it is able to capture 140 degrees of the skyline versus 100 degrees on the residential or the RV non-motion offering that is out there. So that's going to pick up a lot more, uh, you know, satellites obviously, yeah. and should drive down dropouts. The other one that they're saying is it upgrades the uh, GPS tracking for the satellites, which means it's able to hold those satellites better and track more of them, which means less dropouts and higher performance. Cool stuff, uh, which on the face looks really exciting. Now here's the downside, let's talk about the downside. Uh, it is, it's $2,500 and the standard RV edition is $599, so it's 600 bucks. So that's a significant upcharge. Is it worth it? <sighs> well, for the equipment, if the specs shake out, I think so. Uh, you know, not having dropouts is key, especially if you have to do, you know, uh, critical work, which we do. We're, we work remotely, so if you're on remote calls like Zoom or Teams or something like that, you can't have dropouts. So if this larger dish is able to really ensure that you don't have dropouts, even in tight anchorages, that's the difference, mm -hmm. uh, because people have had really good luck, and even we did with the earlier RV edition that was not licensed for in motion. Uh, we disabled the motors and it went flat. We'll give you a link to the video. Uh, and it stopped a lot of the dropouts, but again, it would drop out in tight anchorages like Laura Cove and in, in British Columbia. What's another one? Uh, Chatterbox Falls. Uh, in Malibu. Uh, that was another mm -hmm. one that we would see dropouts. Very tight, super high banks. Mm -hmm. And so I think this new dish could be a solution, which is exciting. Now, the monthly charge is going to continue to be $135 a month, which is the same as what you get charged for the, the RV edition that is not mobile. Right. That's exciting. Uh, so you're not paying more per month and you can pause the service just like we talked about in an earlier review when we were talking about you know, is it better to go with T-Mobile, those types of things uh, for their hotspots or using Starlink, put another video up there for that. So when you get down to it, it's a lot of money. But you know, if you get a multifunction display from Raymarine or Garmin, uh, well, $2,500 pales in comparison into any electronics that you put on a boat. It's still a pretty good deal. And it's a heck of a lot less than $10,000 for the maritime off. 
parade. All right, so the monthly charge is gonna be the same. Uh, in motion, I think that's pretty important. Uh, right now, what they've been doing for the classic RV ones that, you now a lot of us, our peers, I'll say, the voting peers, we've been out there, we've been using the RV one. Uh, it used to be, we could use it at any speed, never cut off. And then they implemented a new firmware and now it looks like under 10 knots or you know, right in there or 10 miles an hour, it now cuts out when it goes over that. So you can, you can get away with cruising slower. You can get away with using it on the hook. Will they disable that uh, later? Well, I gotta be honest with you. I've been reading some of the new updated terms and conditions and they do look like they're gonna start uh, differentiating these different offerings. So they're saying that in motion is per prohibited for undesignated kits in, in countries. Uh, so right now this in motion is only uh, a license right now in the United States. I'm hoping it's gonna be in Canada as well because we get up there quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're prohibited from installing or using the kit on a moving vehicle or vessel unless Starlink has designated your specific kit or model and mount for in motion use and has obtained all the required in motion approvals from the country of use. So this new one that's come out, this new flat panel, uh, it's gonna be easier to mount, uh, those types of things, but they're saying right up front, that I think they're really creating different, a differentiation. They just updated these terms of use when they launched this new flat panel for in motion on RVs. Now, I would expect some of you to go, John, a boat is not an RV. Uh, you need to get the maritime one. You're causing a conflict. It, you know, you're giving bad information on the internet. People like to say those types of things. Well, right here in the terms and conditions, they say services in motion on a vehicle or vessel, e.g. cars, vans, RVs, and boats, via an unauthorized kit in an unapproved country will void the limited warranty if you use your kit. Now, the interesting part, I don't really care about voiding warranties. It's kind of in my blood. He voids warranties all the time. Yeah, that's... It's his jam. It's my hobby. Uh, but they have updated even further in their terms and conditions saying that they can cancel your service if you're using, uh, you know, undesignated kit, I like to call it, but equipment, which would be the non-in-motion uh, offerings that could cancel. So far, they don't seem to be going in that direction, but now that they've offered this, is it going to be a problem? So I guess two things. I feel good that we can put it on the boat. I think they're classifying as an RV, just reading their terms and conditions. That's good. Um, and I think it's going to handle some of these dropout issues that we've seen in, in mm -hmm. tighter coves because of the GPS upgrades as well as... You know, the, the broader uh, line of sight to the sky. Okay, what else has changed? Uh, a couple things. On the downside, I always like to start with the downside. Uh, the wattage was about 55 to 70 watts on the classic, uh, you know, antenna that they had for RV or the residential one. Um, that was for snow melt as well as running the motor. This one uses twice as much power. Mm probably to be able to track the satellites, but the other one is it's able to melt snow 1.7 times faster from the dish. So that's, that's cool. important. Yeah, there you go. Um, it is coming with a, a wedge mount. Um, they say if you don't mount it with the wedge mount that it will not be covered under warranty. It has about an eight degree tilt so that water will run off of the dish. Um, so that's kind of a consideration. It is rated to be survivable to 175 miles an hour of wind. Woo. Yeah, the the smaller one is only, it's rated less than 100, so you're ready for a hurricane there. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, which, which would work. The other one is they're talking about it has, in high heat conditions, uh, it's able to have higher performance as well, which if you're in the Caribbean, in Florida, those types of things, that's probably going to matter. Uh, the last thing that I think is really important, uh, it's an IP56 versus an IP54 with the smaller original RV edition that, that's not licensed for in motion. What does that mean? Right. So instead of having to Google IP classifications, a 54 means it can take water spray and an IP56 means it can take a water jet without having water penetration, which fits pretty well for a boat. I'd still rather see IP67 
wouldn't we all? Uh, so you could just get immersed in water and we wouldn't have to worry about mm -hmm. it. I don't know quite why they're not doing it, but it, you know, I, I'm not gonna second guess them on those things. Uh, the other part is the performance is supposed to be up to 300 uh, meg per second versus I've seen 200 on the standard edition. So you should get greater performance. Although with any of the RV editions, they are best effort. So if you're in a highly congested area, like when we're in Seattle, mm -hmm. we get best effort because those that have the residential setup that you know, they've been designated to that area, they should take priority. However, if you get up in like a desolation sound, we're gonna get screaming performance because there just aren't that many people right now. Although this is a hot ticket. So I guess we'll close. This is big news, right? Uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've all been waiting to see, are they gonna launch something that does have in motion uh, that we can use? The answer is yes, as of today. Yep, uh, what are we gonna do with the one that we have? I don't know, we're kind of debating. We were actually, we have a couple that we were gonna cut the backs off of and make flat mounts out of, and then we were gonna join those through our PEP wave to be able to do WAN bonding. Uh, we'll talk later about our PEP wave Im implementation, but basically that, that really makes sure that it, we do WAN smoothing, we don't get dropouts, those types of things. That's the way we were gonna go, but Given the possible limitations of, of in motion, they might crack down on those things, given the equipment that we have, maybe it makes sense just to get one of these single, larger, higher performance dishes and just put one on there and we know we're covered, we know we have in motion support. I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out. The future is always changing. Especially when Elon and, Musk is involved. And I cannot predict the future. No, we're terrible at that. However, uh, you know, like to do the things that, you know, uh, we can control, which basically is just our behavior. So hopefully this was useful to you. Exciting news. We'll keep updating things as, as we go. Uh, it is on the website right now. If you go to the RV link, uh, there's two, two links. You've got the standard one, and then you have the high performance one. They say that they start shipping in December. Right. Uh, so those will be coming out shortly. And I do believe I've also read that WineGuard uh, is going to be a distributor for them, which this is the first time they've actually used a reseller. I think that's gonna help them break into the market, especially the mm -hmm. RV market. Mm -hmm. They provide a lot of equipment for OEM or original equipment on RVs. So that's gonna start happening as well. In fact, I've heard that uh, you don't have to wait until December if you get it through WineGuard. I think they're able to start shipping them next week. But that's just rumor. Uh, go out, do some research on these things, but rejoice. We can finally use in motion hardware, oh. even though it costs 2,500 bucks. But whatever, it's just the way it goes. Hope this works for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. Peace.